Hello everybody and uh, welcome to uh, another uh, one of my uh, ramblings about uh, my camera collection. Now, some of you who are regular um, watchers of this channel might remember that um, in early uh, 2020, uh, when we first had the lockdowns in the UK, I managed to get hold of um, a Leica 3C stepper. And I suspected at the time that the camera had got a few problems. It was a body only, and I got it at quite a good price for a stepper. And I sent it away for a, a CLA, and, and I got it back early this year. Um, so I've had it back quite some time but I didn't feature it at all because um, it had got film in it and I do like to play about with the cameras when I'm uh, like that for example when I'm doing these uh, these vlogs and so I thought I'll wait a bit later on anyway I have now had a few rolls of film through the camera and at the moment it's empty so I'm just going to feature it now uh, when it came back the first time it um, did have a slight fault on it that hadn't quite been cleared. You may remember I mentioned uh, something about the uh, the wind on. Um, this was actually slightly stiff and um, didn't just didn't feel right. Well, when it was serviced, it came back and it was much freer. But um, while I was playing around with it and firing off, no filming, just firing it off, firing the shutter and winding on, firing the shutter and winding on. After about twenty or thirty. Um, activations of the shutter and the wind on it went a little bit stiff again then it freed off and it went uh, and occasionally this would happen so uh, i sent the camera back to the workshop and they they said that uh, we'll, we'll give it priority and um, it came back with the fault totally cleared um so i put some film through it and uh, i, I looked noticed on some of the frames there was just a sort of a slight ghosting just off to the center of the uh, of the frame on the right hand side it, not the sort of thing you'd expect with a problem with um you know the shutter malfunctioning as such because that would have been anything like that cleared after a service or should be uh, this was more of like an odd little ghost um an oval shape very very faint and it didn't appear on all the frames so i contacted the uh the uh, repairer and they said oh send it back again and we think we think we have solved the problem i did wonder if it was some sort of internal light reflection because there's a little bit of paint missing on the chamber if you take the lens off um you, you can't see it now it's it's been covered up but uh, there was a little bit of paint missing down this one side and i did wonder if it was some internal light reflection but uh, the workshop said that um they pointed out that one of the shutter blinds had been replaced at some point and they reckon that it wasn't quite uh, running smoothly and that may have been the reason for this sort of a little light, light leak around the edge of the uh, blind. Anyway, um, let's hope now that the uh, problem's been fully solved. This is the problem, of course, with, with cameras like this. Uh, they can be stripped and serviced, but it's not until you actually put a film through that you can be absolutely certain everything's... Uh, working properly but anyway the stepper's back uh, anybody watching who may not be quite certain what a stepper is it's um, this little step here that the uh, advanced rewinder sits on on the later ones on, on the post wall like as it was flat I haven't got anything to point it out I should have sorted myself out a little bit better than this but um, you can see that little step there uh, this camera is a 1941 and it goes quite nicely with the later 3C I have which is a 1951 so I've got two 3Cs now which cover um, the early ones and the late uh, later ones the in fact this is a 1941 which was the first year I think of production and the other one I've got was a 1951 which was the last year so they made quite a nice pair um, in, not, in quite nice condition, the only little bit of cosmetic um, problem really is a little bit of the finish missing off the uh, the slow speed dial here, which 
it's not a problem is it that so that's the uh, update on the 3c now you may remember that um i did say i wouldn't be buying any more Leicas. well that's not true because i've bought this one i've had this one a few weeks now and uh this came about because this incidentally is a is a 19 um 1930 um like a 1a um the reason i bought this is because i recently went to a local auction and bid on one there the one at the local auction actually wasn't um as good as this one um i did bid on this but i'm glad i didn't get the uh i'm glad i didn't win the the auction because um the auction house had admitted that there were faults with the one they had and uh one of them was the the aperture control here was was completely jammed um and i think that now they said the actual um i think they said the focus ring was jammed but um certainly the aperture one was so i rather suspect they got that wrong and it was the aperture one they meant not the focus ring but um what i did like though is that the looking at this camera they had they they had um, a few likers they had a lot of cameras it was a not the camera auction it was an antiques auction blokey things along with a general fine arts auction the whole thing went over three days uh but anyway i looked i looked at the one they got and uh holding one of these you know you think look at it you think oh, that's rather nice actually i wouldn't mind one of those so what i did i went online and i found a london dealer selling one um which had just been serviced um and this is it it came with um a range finder as well a vertical one that uh, sticks up in the air like that and uh unfortunately i should have got that out of the cupboard to show you but anyway it's um the range finder apparently had been serviced as well and the thing was that um as i've said before auction houses you have to remember that uh, you pay for um, a buyer's commission and you also pay vat and um the difference in price between the auction item and this one the retail price of this one was hardly any difference so um in fact i think i was outbid on the at the auction by probably one or two bids and i'm quite pleased i did actually because i'd have been buying a camera for about the same price as i bought this one but with faults on it whereas this one comes with a um a warranty and it apparently has been recently recently serviced and uh of course being a much earlier like being a like one it doesn't have the slow speed dial here and maximum shutter speed is um one five hundredth of a second and as you can clearly see it, it there's no range finder the range finder came but did come with the camera and it also came with rather a nice uh, case which um we've treated with some leather cleaner uh, and um given it a good soaking with some leather restorer so it's um becoming quite uh, quite subtle a uh, su uh, supple no supple rather than subtle yet yeah, supple um with the uh, with the leather feed and uh all in all the, the little kit's looking rather nice now um i'm not totally au fait with the early Leica. this is i said is a 1a um this one is a late one i think the first ones that came out were about 1925 ish and they some of them had a hector lens and some of them which i think was a 35 millimeter focal length but don't quote me on that and some of them had um an lmax lens the lmax was an earlier development of what became the elmar but this one is an early one the, the, the lens as you can see the lens is permanently um it's not interchangeable it's not permanently mounted to the body as i was going to say because there are screws here and i rather suspect if these screws were unloosened the lens would come off not that i'm uh, 
going to try it at the moment but uh, it, it, it's not an interchangeable lens there's no lens thread and um, why have I taken the base off well just to give you a quick look inside it is actually quite clean considering it's it's age it's about what is it 91 years old or something like that and there you go and there's the the inside of the base cover as well I don't know what that number signifies but uh, considering its age it's all it's all rather clean so I'll just uh, off camera put the base back on and lock it and uh, this this Elmar is different to the what you'd expect a, a normal Elmar to look like because what I've done I've, I've actually bought when oh, it's got a genuine like uh, lens cap as well um, the normal Elmar had, if that was mounted to a camera the infinity lock would be about there and you focus by uh, doing that and there is your focus point up there now so there's your your distance in this case um, in feet on this one as opposed to meters um, and there the little arrow with well, that little arrow there indicates the uh, the distance the lens is focused to so it's on 8 now then 10 um, 15 and so on and so forth that is the normal way you'd expect uh, an Elmar to operate but on this one it's slightly different because the locking infinity lock is up here as opposed to about here and you unlock it by pressing that little this is almost like spring loaded it's a piece of spring steel probably but press it down it allows the lens to uh, come down like so and the focusing is and I don't know whether you can see this if I start to move that can you see just there that there's a, a little sort of cutaway with a single line and the, the single line uh, I try and get that's it there, there's there's the line and you can see it's uh, set on it's now set on infinity because it's gone back into the infinity lock so if I unlock it again and turn it it goes right round it's three meters this one is in meters um, and so on round to Two point five, and eventually down to one meter there. So, at least I think that's one meter. That's certainly one point two five meters there. But can you see the little line anyway? That's all I wanted to show you, really. So I'll let it go back into the lock position. I've not put any film through this camera. I intend to. It is quite it's quite sweet it's something but rather magical about these early likers so it's uh, literally at the moment it's set up as a um what we call a viewfinder camera um and you can use this quite happily you don't need to have a range finder if you're good at judging distances then there's no real absolute uh, necessity for a range finder um, what I will do though I'll just nip to the cupboard I'm trying to find the other range finder and here he is back again just like a, a professional sprinter uh, well not quite so there there's the uh, lights range finder and that goes on the camera with the the dial there facing the actually goes that way with the dial there 
Um, or does it go that way? Let me have a look. No, it goes that way. That's right. So pop that in like so. Snap it right in. Make sure it is a little bit loose actually. I know it isn't. It's going quite nicely there. So there's the two range finders lenses or whatever you like to call them. And you view through there and you, you focus through there like so. And because it's actually vertical as opposed to the horizontal ones which run that way. Um, the two images merge like so vertically which you'd expect since the thing's sitting up vertically but uh, it's actually really accurate I, I've tried this it's very clear as well I've um, and I have tried it out um, and it's actually a really good range finder um, and clearly it's the shop told me it had some attention and I can believe them you know it's it's rather nice and uh oops the uh I hadn't quite got that uh, locked properly. Just do, do that again. Yeah, that's it. Locked properly now. Yeah, and so there's the uh, the lights rangefinder. You can see that. But um, I probably, I don't know whether I'd use that if I take the camera out. Um, at least I'm not sure I'd mount it to the camera like that. I might just... The, put it in my pocket I don't know I've not used the camera yet I hope to do so next week but um, it is rather nice and uh, I'm just hoping uh, it does work little colors missing I think from around the shutter button that's quite common and I believe the reason I've got another Leica with that missing and I think the reason for that is because the um, in, in order to put a Leica shutter release cable on these, that color has to be removed, I think. And obviously, they either aren't put on properly, or they, or suddenly owner puts the thing down and forgets to replace it. So it's quite common to have uh, Leicas with those little colors missing. Um, and what else can I say about it? Well, not a lot, but it, it, it I think the the, <laughs> the black suits these models and. There's just, as you can see, some nice brassing just around the edge there. Uh, but when you consider the age of this camera, it, it's quite remarkable, really, just how good a condition it is. And I'll just put it by uh, a later one. There's actually um, 10 years difference in production here. Um, I say this is a 1A. Then the next model was... Um, produced uh up until well actually i'm not sure when the production stopped of the the 1a but um the i think it was 1932 when the first of the cameras with the um built-in rangefinder appeared and of course they were the called the Leica twos um this being a 1a was replaced by uh the 1b um, round about, uh, hmm. I think, I think actually not long after this one was made, it, um, this is a 1931, I think in the early thirties, the, the, t the, uh, Leica one, one B was introduced. Sorry about that. Just having a quick uh, sip of coffee. Um, and the, the one B looked exactly the same as this but the lens was interchangeable. So um, that's it really, I suppose. I, I don't think I can tell you a lot more. Uh, what I would like to say though as well is I'd like to, first of all, and I should have done this right at the start and I apologize. I should have said a welcome to at least three new members. And I do hope that uh, you in I hope the new members have actually seen some of the older uploads I've done because the sort of there's a sequence, I suppose, when I've done the comparisons. Uh, this one really wasn't meant as a comparison; it was just to update you on the position with the stepper. Um, it is back home now, and it's been back for some months. But I thought while it's there, it is quite interesting to 
uh, compare the two. In actual fact, though, I, what I should be doing really is getting out another one of the pre-war ones I've got um, because they are more akin to this original um, mechanism. As I've said before, the three Cs were the first ones to appear with uh, an all die cast chassis and easily recognisable because of this additional bright work that runs down the side here whereas the pre-war ones didn't have that uh, the this this concept of just having a no range finder did actually, did actually carry on for um, well in, into the uh, certainly into the 50s because uh, you could buy something look, look look very similar to this but it didn't have a viewfinder i mean this this is a permanently attached but it had two and they were referred to as the ones this is where things can get a bit complicated with Leicas because this is a one and then what they did um certain models much later models also were known as ones and they were what i call scientific cameras really because they they didn't have a viewfinder and they didn't have a, a, a device quite like this they had two cold shoes by that i mean that they as opposed to a hot shoe which is electrically coupled they, these were these were two cold shoes or accessory shoes and if you were um say for example uh maybe used by the the police or the military or something like that or um the camera could then be customized by fitting a viewfinder into the um accessory shoe there and fitting a range finder there so if you see something that looks like this with two accessory shoes it's a much later series one um and not to be confused with these which were the series one because uh they were an early design whereas the other series one complemented the series one two and threes so they were different they were like a stripped down version if you like of the three so hope that makes sense um if it does make sense to you then perhaps you can explain it to me on a postcard or something like that anyway um less of the uh, humor oh i'll just show you the the case as well that's the original leather case we, we have cleaned it we've treated it first of all with saddle soap and then we've given it a good dosing with some cars leather feed it does need some attention though it needs um it needs um some skillful saddle maker to unpick all these threads here and um or sorry uh, stitching and restitch it needs restitching because this side is actually has come um completely away from the the main body and this side here is well on its way the other side though uh hasn't it's not so bad i wouldn't use this case though um, but i think it's something quite nice to have and i would i'd imagine that this case uh, probably came with this camera you know it's probably they're all prop it was probably bought with this be nice to think it was anyway so um yeah that that really does need attention and it, i would i would want it done properly i mean you know it would be sacrilege to put some glue in there and glue it together that would be well that would probably work but it would it would be wrong i think i'd like to see it restored properly or or not at all um but yeah so there's the uh lights at the top and lighter at the bottom uh, well i think that's it really um, as i say welcome to new members i hope you enjoy my infrequent ramblings um so anyway next well not next week but maybe today or tomorrow I'll, i will load some film into this i bought some i bought some 24 frame alford fp4 um i'll just put the right lens caps back on that one i'll collapse that all oh, the app the aperture is actually you know, quite quite free on that one and you'll notice like all early Elmars, it has the uh, the unusual 
um, 6.3 and 9 uh, stops which later fell in line more with the more common uh, use uh, stops we, we had like a um, an F8 whereas these earlier ones were F9 um, not a problem you just use the nearest setting to what you want so yeah but that looks quite nice condition and the optics look okay as well um, so anyway I think I'll end the vlog here I'll just put that lens cap back on like so so anyway again welcome welcome newcomers I hope you uh, you enjoy my ramblings and um, I think I think that's probably it um, yeah yes I think that's it if I think of anything else then I'll um, when, when I come along with the next vlog uh, which again it will probably be in a few weeks time um, I'll rectify any mistakes I might have made or if I come to any further conclusions then um, you know I, I will I will sort of let you know um, so fingers crossed this does work uh, it'd be interesting to see the results um, but if it didn't um, I don't know I, it, it would it would just be it's just nice to have in the collection I'd like to get hold of um, a Leica 2 of, of um, with the black finish because all the early ones did have this black finish this this isn't a custom finish all of these of this period were in black and I think it does does quite suit them doesn't it especially when they start to brass a bit like so right then so there you were there's uh, two likers so um, anyway thank you very much for viewing and uh, you'll hear from me well in sometime in the future but do do all take care and uh, enjoy the summer thanks again and i'll see you soon bye for now